The FCS2 is a parallel plate, closed system chamber designed specifically for long-term, time-lapse microscopy. It gives the user the ability to precisely define the flow characteristics of the media over the cells. The FCS2 microaqueduct slide technology provides high numeric aperture compatibility, temperature control without an air curtain, high volume perfusion rates, user definable volume, and control of cell surface shear. The system is made of a microaqueduct slide, which is the heart of the system, atop of the chamber, which has the perfusion ports and the ability to uh, apply and remove media throughout the chamber, and a heated base. First, I'll discuss the microaqueduct slide. In that it is the heart of the system, there's a lot going on with this little piece of glass. The glass is one millimeter thick. It has microaqueduct grooves cut into the inside portion of the glass. This is the part that's close to your cells in the optical cavity. It also has perfusion ports on either ends of the microaqueduct grooves. The opposite side of the microaqueduct slide is coated with indium tenoxide which is an electrically conductive, optically transparent material. We apply to that two bus bars so that we can uniformly create a flow of electrons across the surface of the glass. This electrical flow produces heat that's transferred into the optical cavity formed by the inside surface of the microaqueduct slide, a gasket, and a cover slip. This forms your optical cavity for the cells. The unique feature of this simple design is that by selecting gaskets of different thicknesses and different internal geometries, you can completely control the flow characteristics within the optical cavity. The FCS2 is assembled in the following manner. The top portion of the FCS2 requires a gasket. The gasket is located over top of the perfusion ports. The microaqueduct slide then sits on top and also locates on the same perfusion ports. And at this point, you have already selected a gasket of the appropriate thickness and internal geometry for your experiment. This much of the stack you would already have together in your biosafety cabinet. You would then bring your cells in, grown on a 40 millimeter cover slip. This cover slip is placed on top of the stack. Then you apply the heated base. And then without the need for tools, you simply rotate this outer knurled ring and it will symmetrically lock down the microaqueduct slide gaskets and cover slip. Now you have the cover slip on the bottom surface, the microaqueduct slide on the top surface. So this is ready to go on an inverted microscope after you apply the electrical connector. The electrical connector reads the temperature of the base of the FCS2, it reads the temperature of the microaqueduct slide, and applies electrical current to the top surface of the microaqueduct slide. This allows you to have a very uniform temperature distribution across the flow cell. Another nice feature of having the microaqueduct slide with the temperature control is as you change perfusion through the chamber, the microaqueduct slide can re-equilibrate the temperature through the middle of the field so that you don't end up having the typical temperature gradients that are normal with a peripheral heated system. When this much of the chamber is assembled, you simply place it onto a stage adapter and the stage adapter is then ready to snap into your microscope. This particular stage adapter goes to an Olympus microscope. There are also other stage adapters made to fit a variety of popular microscopes. Now we happen to have a Zeiss microscope over here, so I'm going to make this portion of the demonstration with the Zeiss adapter. Now I'm going to try this and see how well it shows up. Now I'm going to perfuse the chamber and hopefully you can get a shot of the nice uniform wave of media that forms across the optical cavity. The FCS2 also requires a stage adapter for precise positioning. Due to the diversity of microscope stages, it is necessary to determine the correct adapter by identifying the brand of your scope, the manufacturer's stage identification number, and a description. Some of the options available for an FCS2 are a special chamber we've made up for turf applications and single molecule fluorescence. We've made a number of changes to the original design, one of which is we went to a 30 millimeter aperture to make more room for these large turf lenses. Another option is that we install cooling tubes or heating tubes into the base of the chamber. 
This allows you to go well beyond the normal temperature ranges of an FCS2. In some cases, you want to go as, maybe as high as 70 degrees, even 90 degrees, and then drop it down to 10 or even 4 degrees C. And that can be done with fluidic support through these ports. If you want to also accentuate the temperature exchange above the microaqueduct slide, so that you have a more uniform temperature control across the, the field, we have an additional perfusion port that goes in the top of the FCS2. You simply lay this on the top of the chamber, press it in place, it is o-ring sealed, and it allows you to perfuse your own refrigerant or heated fluid over top of a microaqueduct 